Ooga bonk. Baba dooba. Ooga mooga. Welcome to the all-new pause mode for 2018, where the last of my fanboy hardware has been brought forth with the TurboGrafx-16 and the Laser Active suite of systems and games. With the entire game room now in play, I decided to celebrate the occasion and mark this launch of the first new episode of 2018 with the mother of all TurboGrafx Hue cards. Magical Chase. Before we dive into Ripple's adventures, let's quickly go over the system for those who don't remember, or for those who've never even heard of it. The TurboGrafx-16 was the US version of the Japanese NEC console, the PC Engine. The US name plays, plays off of the system's built-in 16-bit processor. Rather than use standard cartridges, the games ran off of what we know as Hue cards, similar to the Sega Master System's card series. Most curious was the controller. While the then Genesis had three buttons, and the eventual Super Nintendo would have six, the Turbo stuck with two. As time went on, the Turbo just couldn't grab a solid foothold in the US market, with poor decision making from its Japanese overlords, and the honest truth that despite being cool, Bonk just wasn't as marketable or lovable as Mario and Sonic. If you're looking to get into the Turbo market, it's a wee bit pricey now, and emulation is your best bet, especially with our subject matter of the day. So, Magical Chase. You play an adorable little witch named Ripple, who has star sh two star-shaped companions named Topsy and Turvy. According to the manual, Ripple went and opened a magical book that unleashed the six bosses of the game, and it's your job to stuff those bastards back in. Had I not read the manual, I would have never known that, as that isn't even mentioned in the game, opening, ending, or otherwise. From the gameplay department, Chase is your typical spaceship shooter, just with an adorable witch on the broom. Scrolling left to right through six stages, you'll move in all eight directions, dodging and weaving through enemy traffic and bullet patterns. Your star buddies act as both a defensive and offensive options. They'll block bullets for you, but you can also set them up in a rotating or stationary move to help get that perfect extra bullet shot in. Every so often, a little shop of items will pop up on screen, and you can use gems collected from defeated enemies to purchase weapon and health upgrades. If you've ever played Lords of Thunder or Forgotten Worlds, you'll know exactly where I'm coming from. There is no denying the game's cuteness and sugar-coated graphics. Ripple has some adorable little pause animations and takes visual damage from ice and fire attacks. Enemies range from the super tiny to the fairly huge, with several frames of animation each. The six levels bounce around the cliché description by changing a few things up. The opening waves take place around the castle, one stage is set up as if it were made entirely of Tetris blocks, and my favorite level looks like it came out of a Studio Ghibli nightmare, with lazily floating evil cats and wavy, rippling backgrounds. Multiple scrolling layers, definitely a lot of enemies on screen at once, and other iPlease additions make it an extremely enjoyable visual experience. Music follows the sugar coating, along with fairly standard sound effects. Thankfully, the control is pretty much dead on, and very rarely will you feel like you are being cheated. In fact, that may be one of the most curious aspects about Magical Chase. Its difficulty spikes go in both directions. Oftentimes, you feel super overpowered. The other half, you're hoping to god the shop shows up finally. The game comes in three difficulty flavors, with the player only allowed access to the first three stages on easy. Medium opens up all six stages, and the hardest difficulty adds more fire to the enemy patterns. So, with all this going for it, how good is Magical Chase really? That's almost a million dollar question. The game is fun, but I honestly couldn't say it's amazingly fun. Having gone through it on medium difficulty, I don't know if I'd ever bother going through it on the highest challenge. I can't see myself playing through it again anytime soon, as I feel I got a healthy serving of it with just the two hours I put into it for this review, and I got up to the end boss. I know that sounds bad, but it's not. I had a great time with it, but there's nothing to pull you back in, for example unlocking stages or boss rush modes or anything for that matter. 
With that said, it's time to kick the 500 pound gorilla in the room and discuss the game's rarity and current going prices. Magical Chase's history of availability is one of confusion, intrigue, and genuine shenanigans. When the console was still somewhat viable in the marketplace, with games still available in store and viable from mail order retailers like TurboZone Direct, Magical Chase was just some $40 game that you didn't buy because you decided it looked kiddish and no one would buy that. So you'd rather have the Street Fighter import or the Neo Geo imports on the arcade card. As time went on and the system began fading from the limelight, it became readily apparent that maybe Magical Chase wasn't a kid's game and maybe we should have snagged it instead. About a year later, it was beginning to gain some traction in the customer demand department. Things took a dark turn when it was found out that an eBay user was buying up every copy they could, going so far as to bully other bidders out of bidding on the game and you could still see other bidders' information, including their contact info. As time went on, Magical Chase finally removed itself from the standard shopping choices and became the holy grail for many collectors, myself included. As I mentioned, the only reason I have a copy for myself is that I bought it for about 150 bucks off of another collector 18 years ago when it was going for about 250 Even at that time, I felt sick spending that much on the game, but it was the last one I needed for my full set. The really sad part is, this is the first time I've ever actually played it. One of the now rarest and most sought after games in history, and I shelved it so I could go play GameCom and write FAQs for Game Facts. It's a charm life, really. In the current market, Magical Chase is the best way to describe trying to track one down. The game is currently averaging anywhere from $3,000 to $5,000 based on condition. Leading up to this episode, a single genuine copy of the game will show up every once in a great while. That said, and I cannot stress this enough, it's not worth it! No game is! No game is worth half a year's mortgage payment or college tuition. Thankfully, thanks to modern tech, ports, and, well, archivists, there are much cheaper and obvious free ways to check it out. While I can't vouch for any of them, nor would I ever, some gamers have started creating reproduction copies of the game for much healthier fees. The game was also ported to the Japanese Game Boy Color and Windows 95. There's also the obvious emulation angle, and while I normally ignore that in my reviews, this is one of those times when I fully embrace and endorse it. Just emulate it. Seriously. While there aren't any known variants of Magical, Magical Chase, thank god, it should be noted that the US version is actually edited from the original Japanese release for the better. Among some minor visual adjustments to the in-game logo, Ripple herself was completely redrawn from scratch, with most of the first stage also being redrawn to look more look like a fairy tale castle rather than a sort of military one. A single enemy and the shop also got a visual makeover. Check out both versions in emulation to see the differences. In the end, Magical Chase sits alone in the TurboGrafx library. It's an enjoyable game that really isn't anything special, but thanks to a late release on a dying system preceded by hype from its Japanese version, it's become one of the most sought-after legendary collectibles in gaming history. <sighs> I still can't believe it's almost episode 50, guys. Seriously, I don't know where time's going. More importantly, my laser active packs and my Turbo Duo are being sent out to be recapped and re uh, battery packed, so they will be in tip top shape for the new era of pause mode. I seriously can't wait. Um, other than that, I will see you all next week. Uh, actually, I'll see you in two weeks on Game Rave TV. Um, and as always, if you guys like the video, go ahead and like it, show it off to your friends, what have you. Um, have a great weekend. Stay warm. It snowed again in Chicago. It's getting ridiculous. I will see you guys in two weeks on Game Rave TV. Take care.